Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. DeGange doing political commentary for the media speaks, and thank you for listening. Some people say they're listening, and I can make sure they're not. Uh, that doesn't make any sense to any of you, by the way. Uh, how do the live listeners like the new mic, by the way? I'm very happy with it. I'm going to let you know something funny. I found the mic at, like, Goodwill, and it's rated really high. This is, like, I looked it up online. It's, like, a $50 mic setup, and it was at Goodwill. Huh, you can't beat it. Uh, how, that's how your money's being spent. So uh, donate, donate to the correct views at uh, hotmail.com. If you're new to the show, by the way, the high def, and that would be, I want to number make a bunch of noise. The mic right here, the really nice mic. The high def here, that's you over there. Low def, you're the ones hearing this mic. And uh, low def are mostly the people who listen live. So, um... Welcome to my live listeners. If you're not listening live, go to uh, youtube.com slash the correct views and uh, listen to it in high def. Friends, I gave a 420 update yesterday. How many of you know the uh, fictional character that we have on this show, Buddy Puff? Um, Buddy Puff, if you will, is uh, one of the many fictional characters of the show, and he gave a 420 update yesterday. Well, we're not going to play around today. We're actually going to do real uh, marijuana, 420, cannabis, whatever you want to say. Um, real news, we're not going to use Buddy Puff. We're actually just going to go ahead and do the news as we normally do. Because, guys, while I like to joke, I like everyone here listening to the humor and the joking of the show. And uh, Christelle and I have historically worked very hard to make it happen. Marijuana is an issue that applies whether or not you are in favor of smoking marijuana or not in favor of smoking marijuana. The point is, that is a decision that does not involve the federal government. It's between that person, God, and nobody else. Well, we're going to get into some news about how this matters to you and how this affects the way you perceive it and the way your tax dollars are used to prosecute it. How's that? This is from QZ.com. The marijuana industry's newest customers are... Yo, man, it must be a lot of gangsters in the hood. No, it's the sick and elderly dogs. That's right. These are your new enemies. These are the people breaking the law. These are the evil people of our time. The day before a scheduled vet appointment to euthanize her dog, Wendy Mansfield decided to try one last resort to alleviate the chronic pain of her 15-year-old Labrador mix. Cookies are from a marijuana dispensary made specifically for ailing dogs. Her and her dog should both be shot. They are traitors to the state and they are evil. I think you should kill them both slowly. Not really. Kelly, a mild mannered 80 pound rescue, was never much of a complainer, but she often licked her paws, which of course is an obvious sign of pain, accompanied by bouts of coughing because she was shedding fur that got into her throat, of course, from licking her paws. One cookie, though, and 20 minutes later, the licking suddenly stopped. Well, that means the dog should be shot because it is abusing marijuana laws. Seeing this Mansfield, uh, who lives in Fort Bragg, California, gave her dog a second cookie and then a third. Kelly, who had been listless and depressed, got up to drink some water and walked outside Something she hadn't been able to do recently without groaning or obvious signs of pain. Mansfield then called the vet to cancel her appointment. And that was three weeks ago. She got three more weeks with her dog, even if it was to keel over immediately. Never in my wildest dreams have I anticipated this, she tells Quartz. That is QZ.com. It brought my dog back. 
with marijuana flourishing into a big business in the U.S. Now I'm fixing my mic that I tried to show you and I have now disheveled. A new segment of the market, Christelle is shaking her head, a new segment of the market catering to aging and ailing pets has been growing. Under the radar, the legal weed market raked in $2.7 billion in revenue in 2014. That is legal, perfectly allowed to do. And one estimate by the ArcView Group, a network that connects investors with cannabis startups, uh, the projects, the industry projects the industry, excuse me, to top ten billion dollars in sales. With a link to show you how by 2018, the pet pot market is treading on new territory. However, the legal gray area is posing challenges for companies that want to market and distribute cannabis-derived products for animals. There is also insufficient scientific backing and industry guidelines. Still, that's not deterring desperate pen owners like Mansfield or keeping investors from getting on board. Let me paraphrase that for you. If you give your dog that you are already going to put to sleep, by the way, poisonous chemicals, poisonous injections, since you're going to kill the dog for its own good, you should not try marijuana on your soon-to-be-put-to-sleep dog, even though it might work because the marijuana cookies may be bad for the dog. Never mind the fact that it's going to guaranteedly be bad for the dog if you inject it and kill it. <laughs> what the f I'm going to say it. If you don't like swearing, pause in 3, 2, 1. What the fuck? That makes no sense at all. All right, turn your, turn your volume back up. I'm done swearing. The FDA is watching. The special cookies given to Cali were produced by Auntie Dolores. There's a link for it. An Oakland-based maker of edible marijuana goods, including caramel corn, cheese crackers, and savory pretzels, a bestseller. The seven-year-old company launched its pet treat line, Treatables, about a year ago. No, the best thing to do is immediately kill your animal and don't ever give it a chance. Unlike its edibles for humans, Treatables products, which are sold in dispensaries, aren't made from marijuana, marijuana but from hemp. The stem of the cannabis plant that is low in the psychoactive component THC which produces that feeling of getting high. Now, anybody who has ever made anything enjoyable on 420, be they brownies, cookies, or perhaps peanut butter, you've used stems before, and you know that it does its job nicely, but you would have to save your stems for a whole year to be able to get high off of your stems if you put them into fudge. And I won't tell you how I know that. Hemp, however, does contain cannabinol, cannabinol or CCBD, a chemical compound that alleviates pain, and that means it makes you stop hurting without using pharmaceuticals. The U.S. government also defines hemp as cannabis, not necessarily the stem that measures less than 0.3% in THC, a threshold that allows its movement across state lines. Most companies making cannabis-derived pet products choose to use hemp because the federal government still classifies marijuana as a Schedule I substance as a link defined as drugs with no currently accepted medical use and a high potential of abuse. Now let me pause here, because this is why you listen to the correct views. You want the facts given to you from somebody that can prove it, right? Well, I'm going to prove something right here. Hemp Oil Girl. Look up Hemp Oil Girl, the media speaks. You'll find us on YouTube. Hemp oil girl was supposed to be dead a long time ago, but she started using hemp oil made a certain way, which you can find on her page, that has stopped 
the rapid progress of her illness. She's supposed to be dead like two years ago, three years ago by now, maybe. One of the no, well, not one of the the most brave human being that I've ever interviewed is Hemp Oil Girl. Um. Literally, I sat there with, like, almost tears in my eyes after experiencing the passion and bravery of spirit that this girl possessed. Well, because she's now starting to go downhill, there are people saying that marijuana, THC, cannabis, weed, pot, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't work or she wouldn't be dying. <laughs> Do you not see that it has given her a life, and not just a life living in the nursing home on a freaking IV tree, given her a life for the last three or four years. She still isn't on an IV tree, and she isn't any closer to dying than anybody else said that she was. The tumor has simply gotten, I think I might be wrong, hopefully it's regressed, a little bit bigger. If she had not used hemp oil, she would already be dead. Well, Sam, you're just a long-haired freak in a hat, and I don't believe you. Contact hemp oil, girl. She'll verify my story. So don't tell me it doesn't work. I've spoken to somebody that it's worked for. Don't question me. I know what I'm talking about. Currently, 23 states in the District of Columbia have medical marijuana laws. But as it stands, veterinarians aren't empowered to prescribe cannabis to pets. No, but they can put them to sleep without trying it. That's wonderful. And that could change soon. It says Nevada is currently debating a bill that would allow people to obtain medical marijuana for their pets with the vet's approval. How very nice of them. Though Auntie Dolores CEO Juliana Carella has heard from customers like Mansfield... She's hesitant to promote the product's effects or even market treatables at all. Honestly, we're hands off that because we're not doctors and it's not our place to prescribe it in that way. No, why don't you just inject the dog and kill it outright? Uh, this is ridiculous. And it goes on to mention that the elderly have also been using it to help. There are reports of it helped, uh, having helped with anxiety disorders. I am mildly obsessive compulsive. Uh, have I ever tried marijuana? No, never, never in my life. But if I had, I might be telling you that it is somewhat beneficial to people that suffer from such things, although I would never know from per first-hand experience because I'm a saint. All right, guys, Infowars.com. I posted this story. Police raid activists' home and confiscate son after in-school pro-marijuana comments. This is by Alan Salazar. Friends, this is the disgusting fascist world that we are now roped into living to. If this story doesn't make you want to vomit, then how did you ever find my show? Because this is disgusting. The state of Kansas is threatening to confiscate a marijuana activist's son after the child reported, reportedly disputed the teachings of one of his instructors during a drug education lesson. You should not speak, little child. You should simply obey. You are part of the Hitler Youth. Sieg Heil. Wait till you can grow a little mustache. Last month, 37-year-old Arthur and Cannabis can't <laughs> the cannabis like I'm, like I'm so gay and we're talking about cannabis last month retake 37 year old art author and cannabis oil activist retake wasn't much better Shana Banda's Garden City home was targeted for a police raid after the 11 year old son made in school comments suggesting he favored the marijuana plant as a medical treatment now they could have taught the child why he was wrong if they believed him to be wrong, but no, they had a much better idea. Wait till you hear this. Banda was reportedly been using the oil as a therapy for Crohn's disease since the early 2000s. Now, I won't say who. 
suffice it to say, I swear on the credibility of my show that I'm telling the truth. Fair enough? I'm three years into this. I'm not playing around with words here. I know somebody with Crohn's disease whose life has been destroyed by it. This person, according to my opinion, my opinion, can tell you this is true. And as somebody who would happily take a bullet for this person, I verify that I'm telling you the truth. There, there's my credibility. You either click off because you don't believe me or you know if you're looking into my eyes that I'm telling you the truth. I know it works for people with Crohn's disease. Are we, are we square? Good. My son says different things, like my mom calls it cannabis and not marijuana. He let them know how educated he was on the facts, Bonda said in an interview for benswan.com. And let me tell you real quick, there's a difference between cannabis and marijuana. There's ways to help yourself without getting high. Now, friends, you see the long hair. You see the tattoo. There is an assumption that perhaps your humble host may have smoked weed before. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the getting high that I may or may not enjoy doing. I am talking about something that goes way beyond what I've ever had to do. And I hope God never makes me have to do this because I've never once had to do it. Marijuana, cannabis, THC, stems, whatever, are helping people with real medical issues that have nothing to do with getting high. Do you know that there are people that have specifically grown marijuana in such a way that it is scientifically impossible to get high on because they're giving it to a little girl and this little girl used to have anywhere from 50 to 120 seizures a day and now the little girl has none. Well, nobody wants their little girl to get high. Let me tell you what. If you have a little four or five year old girl and you're getting her high, do not call yourself a friend of this show. I think you're a piece of freaking scum. How's that? No, that's not cool. These people are giving this girl a medicine, not a drug, and she is not getting high. Look up THC, little girl uh, epilepsy. You'll find the story I'm talking about. I forget her name. I'm a good host. I'm not a perfect one. Um, I also don't use uh, 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 prescripts. I'm not reading off a script. I'm talking to you. Rush Limbaugh does it. Yeah, it's because Snurdly looks it up for him. Um, this is talking about drugs that are saving people's lives and making a difference in a very good way. I'm going very long tonight, but I think a lot of you that listen to the show because you want facts, you're going to be happy that I'm going long because I'm giving it to you real. It says... Uh, they had that drug education class at school that was just conducted by the counselors. They pulled my son out of school at about 1.40 in the afternoon and interrogated him. Police showed up at the house at 3. I let them know that they weren't allowed in my house without a warrant. That is a very good thing to do, and all of you should do exactly that if it ever happens to you. I didn't believe you could get a warrant off of something, but a child says in school, she said. By 6 o'clock... That's three hours later. Police had obtained a warrant and executed a search warrant of Brenda's home while she was away, leaving a note on her table listing the items seized. Marijuana in a plant, oil, joint, gel, and capsule form, and drug paraphernalia, according to the Garden City Telegram. Pause! This is why you listen to the correct views, because I'm going to give it to you straight. The facts is that at 1.40, her son was questioned, pulled out of school. At 3 o'clock, she denied entry into her home. At 6 o'clock, they went in, and she wasn't there. She had three hours to get rid of the marijuana plant that they found, the oil that they found, and uh, oil isn't easy to make, the joint that they found, the gel, and a capsule form of the drug. 
along with paraphernalia, which means a pipe to smoke it in. Now, if she thought that she was doing anything wrong, she had three hours to get rid of those things. She's standing by her guns. And let me tell you why I support her. She has Crohn's disease. If Crohn's disease goes badly for you, unfortunately, I've never known anybody that this has happened to other than my grandmother, rest her soul, it happened because of cancer. I've never known anybody that this has happened to because of Crohn's disease and hope that I never do. If Crohn's disease goes badly, they will cut so much of your intestines away that you have to wear what's called an ostomy. That means that you will forever have bowel movements out of your stomach into a bag. You won't be able to do things like anal sex. I said it. I, I, if you don't use humor, then everybody tunes out. I use humor. If you don't like it, then maybe you should tune out. But so, you know what? You use gallows humor. It's not funny. If Crohn's disease goes bad, all jokes aside, if Crohn's disease goes bad for you, that's what happens. This woman, her life, her quality of life, and you can look at her. She's very, very thin. You can tell she has Crohn's disease. Look up Crohn's. You'll see why I'm saying it. Um, this woman's life depends on her doing exactly what she's doing. She's not doing anything wrong, and she's not just sitting back at night. It says, Banda was then arrested and her son was seized from the home, reports the Washington Post, Radley Balako. I have not been charged with anything at this point, but I have a hard time believing that it's okay for them to interrogate my son without parental consent for hours, Banda said. Pause! If her son had stabbed somebody, if the person didn't die, in most states you have to get the parent's permission to question the child without an attorney present. That didn't happen here. And her son didn't stab anybody. He was pretty much standing up for what should be his rights and his mother's rights to not have to spend her life dreading what can be Crohn's disease. And I'm telling you, Crohn's disease can be a nightmare of which you have never known. How bad is Crohn's disease? If you gave me a Bible, I'd swear on it. I would rather somebody shot me in the head and blew my head off than I ever had to face having Crohn's disease. I'm dead serious. I don't have the bravery for it. I, I have more bravery for a gunshot. Meanwhile, it says the Department of Children and Families, that's the CPS, that's the new Hitler Nazis of our country, uh, has taken her son into protective custody. Banda is attending a custody hearing scheduled for today to learn the outcome of her case. Bandu had previously lived in Colorado, which thankfully has its head on its shoulders regarding pot, says despite her predicament, she's not upset that her son got her into trouble. For him to have spoken up in class, I can't be upset about it because he hears me daily on the phone, talking with people, encouraging people to speak up and speak out, she said. We didn't have to talk about how it's not okay to bring up this in Kansas because it's different than in Colorado. It's very confusing for a child, Banda said. Possession of any amount of marijuana, including for medical use, is still legal in Kansas, though a few pro-marijuana bills are currently moving through the legislature, including one seeking to allow cannabis oil as a treatment for seizures. A GoFundMe defense fund has been set up for Branda and has raised over $25,000 in just six days. Christelle, you can go downstairs in a minute, but I would like to pledge in front of you that I am giving $5 tonight to GoFundMe.com on a prepaid card because this woman has been harassed for using marijuana for her own purposes. I'll do it on camera. Am I telling the truth? Yes, he is. Five dollars goes to this woman. You can go to GoFundMe.com. I'll even sweeten the deal. I'll do five as well. There you go. Ten dollars. You do not tell a person who's dealing with Crohn's disease how to handle their BS. You know what? If you have Crohn's disease, you have it bad enough already, and the government needs to leave you the hell alone. Friends, uh, here we go. Moving on. 
I'm getting away from marijuana news. I've already been on almost a half hour. But I'll be getting hits in droves. So I'm going to go ahead and do a long show because you guys have been watching. The more you watch, the more you get from me. Uh, do you want me five days a week? I'll do uh, Tuesday through Saturday. I do the 2 p.m. show at uh, Mediaspeaks.com Eastern Standard Time every Saturday. I need to make $25,000 a year to do this five days a week. If you want Christelle running the camera, 35 grand. 99.99% of you cannot make that happen, but somebody can. Go to the correct views at hotmail.com if you're that person. I'll say this on camera too. Within two weeks of you pledging 35 grand to the show and sending me a check, I'll quit my job and you'll have me for one year, five days a week. You got it. I take two weeks off in the summer. I take two weeks off in the winter. Independent.co.uk, because I work very hard, that's why. Israel must end its 50-year occupation of Palestine, the White House says. Do you understand the only thing that's bringing any kind of reason to that entire region whatsoever is the existence of Israel? Now, before you leave me hate mail in my car, I liked him until he said that, but he's a Jew lover, so I'm going to go ahead and delete. Listen, you freaking Hitler. Islam's problem is that they will kill each other within the beliefs of their own system. You don't find that happening in large numbers in Buddhism. You don't find it happening in uh, Judaism. You know what? I'll be fair. You don't find it happening in Satanism. I have a lot of friends that are Satanists. I'm in a goth band, okay? My band is passing time. Low deaf people already know that because of the uh, lower third. I'm in a goth band, okay? I write about dreary, dark things that I need to get out of my soul so that they don't stay in me and darken me. While I am not satanic, I'm actually Christian. Believe Christ rose from the grave and believe it happily so I can prove it. Um, I have no problem with Satanists. Satanists don't bother me. I have a lot of friends that are Satanists. Mike Spike, if you're listening to this, leave a comment. He's got like a blasphemous uh, Last Supper on his chest. And he's proud of it. Um, you know what? When I'm in a mosh pit at a death metal concert and everybody's satanic and I'm shoving people and they're shoving me, when I fall down, Joe Satanist with an inverted cross on his chest lifts his arm down to pick me up so I don't get trampled. Those of you that don't know what a mosh pit is have no earthly idea what the hell I'm talking about. Um, when Joe Satanist falls on the ground, I lift him up so he doesn't get trampled. We don't have this problem here. So we don't understand it when it goes into other religions. But Islam is a religion that would do everything it could to make sure that anybody that disagreed with its faction of Islam got trampled to death. Am I speaking about all Islamists? No, but you get the analogy. They don't work like we do over there. If you are the wrong kind of Islam, then you are as good as deserving to have your head cut the hell off. This is terrible. Independent.co.uk. Israel must end its 50-year occupation of the Palestine territory. Barack Obama's White House has said, thus guaranteeing that all the Jews get run into the sea. And before any of you boneheads call me a Zionist, I am not a Zionist. I do not like Zionism. I think it's a huge problem. I'm talking about Judaism. Zionists need to be run out of the country the same way that Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton and most of the left need to run out of ours, okay? So I'm not blind to what's going on here. I don't think anybody should be harassed for any religion. It says, in a speech on Monday, as I continue here, the White House Chief of Staff, Dennis McDonough, called into question the Israeli government's commitment to finding a peaceful solution to the Middle East conflict. 
Let's remember that Israel got talked into getting rid of Gaza, and the only thing they've gotten for it is bombed from Gaza. Israel cannot maintain military control of another people indefinitely. Well, it's not control. They're trying to guard their own country. He told a meeting at liberal American pro-Israel lobbyist J Street, an occupation, he says, that has lasted almost 50 years must end. No, the people that have harassed the existence must end their harassment. That is a correct view. Mr. McDonough, the most senior official in the U.S. president's team, has highly critical of earlier comments made by Israeli's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, in which the country's leader indicated that he was not interested in working towards Palestinian sovereignty. What these people are saying is that Israel should leave the area and give much of it to become a Palestinian territory. Because if they do, the Palestinians will suddenly quit bombing them. That's the same promise that they were given about Gaza. And what happened in Gaza? They gave up Gaza and they got their asses bombed. So why would they fall for it again? Okay, they're Jewish. They're not retarded. I'm, I'm not going to pull punches here. This is the correct views and I'm going to say it the way it is. The White House comments are the latest salvo from the United States government in what appears to be a noticeable cooling of relations between the two countries. This is ridiculous. After the election, the Prime Minister said that he had not changed his position, but for many in Israel and in the international community, such contradictory comments call into question his commitment to a two-state solution as did his suggestion that the construction of settlements was a strategic purpose of dividing Palestinian communities in his claim that the conditions excuse me, in the larger Middle East must be more stable before a Palestinian state can be established, the chief of staff said. We cannot simply pretend that those comments were never made or that they don't raise questions about the Prime Minister's commitment to achieving peace through direct negotiations. The latest statement appears to be a rejection of an attempted about face by Israeli Prime Minister who attempted to downplay his earlier comments after criticism. The point is, the more land that Israel gives to these monsters, the more that they are going to be bombed. And by monsters, I do not mean your average Arab or your average practitioner of Islam. I mean the pieces of scum that manage to become your leadership. And I do not pretend that it's any different here. We have Christians here who are the worst Christians ever. Am I the worst Christian ever? I used to think I was until I saw some of our leaders. Barack Obama claims to be Christian. The Westboro Baptist Church, who really isn't a leader, they claim to be Christians. Um, I get it. Christians, I'm speaking to you and me. We're being scammed. Um, Jews, if you let Islam do this, you're out of your damn mind. Jews, you need to get rid of your Zionistic ways because you are part of the problem because Zionists are not Jews. Zionists, in large part, are filth. Am I clear? Good. Steve Watts in Infowars.com, Wisconsin cops will now forcibly take DNA for all misdemeanors. Does the Fourth Amendment say that you are protected against illegal searches and seizures? And then how does taking your DNA not count? Um... I was in a relationship once where the person I was with was going to college and they had taken a science course that allowed them to get their DNA in a little bottle. Now I know a lot of you think that Angelina Jolie is creepy because she did this. I think Angelina Jolie is a piece of crap because of what she did to Billy Bob for no reason. But I don't think she was weird for wearing the DNA around her neck. When the person I was with gave me her DNA on a, in a little jar because she got it out of her science class, I was touched, and I wore it. 
Unfortunately, I took it off when I was taking a bath to protect it, and a bathroom door was opened by said person, by the way, and they <laughs> broke the DNA. The point being, it's a very personal thing. Now, you can think I'm a freak. You can think Angelina Jolie is a freak. Uh, I'm half a freak. She's a nutcase, just to be clear. But you can think whatever you want. Um, it's very personal for those of us that cherish such things. Well, isn't the Fourth Amendment written to protect such things? I don't care if you want to give your DNA to the first person that walks down the street. That's your God-given right. But that is, in fact, an illegal search and seizure if somebody demands it of you. It's, it, it's a non-sexual rape is what it is. It says, in a precedent-setting move, beginning April, I t cops in Wisconsin, that is April now, will not only take DNA samples from felons, but will collect and record samples of all criminal misdemeanor convictions. A misdemeanor could be jaywalking. This is not grounds to uh, break the Fourth Amendment. Read it. It's called the Constitution. I've been listening to Usher, man, and I don't know what the Constitution is. You should probably read it. A local Fox affiliate link carries the story noting that the number of DNA samples collected each year is set to increase to an estimated 60,000. Currently, 10,000 to 12,000 samples per year are taken from felons. A felon is a little bit different. The justification, police claim, is that hundreds of thousands of unsolved crimes could be solved by taking everyone's DNA. Friends, if you cannot tell that this is a slippery slope on the way to hell where they can take your DNA for anything just to prove that you didn't do something, then there's something wrong with you. Okay, there's something wrong with you. Now, a lot of people have skeletons in their closet forever. For instance, I should say, my, my uh, love of uh, THC. Do I smoke weed? You know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Yes, I do. How's that? I do. I just said it. There you go. I do. But Sam, you said you wanted to be.